and welcome flip clock fans this is part two of looking at this clock we've got online recently it is a uh, copal model ap113 it was designed for use in japan 100 volts 50 or 60 hertz operation um, this is a clock i got for a steel really got lucky on that one um, it only cost the bid the winning bid was um $1.50. Shipping was $29 plus some tax. Uh, that is very, very unusual. So um, you can't expect to see that very often. This is just the insert. Uh, in the previous video, video, I had talked about how half of Japan is at uh, 50 hertz and the other half is at, at 60 hertz, half more or less. Um, this is just explaining that to those in Japan. Um, so we're looking at this Copal. AP113. I said in the previous video I had no idea what motor was in here. Well, I have a pretty good idea. I would, I'm hoping it's a Copal 2 motor. Uh, we will just have to see about that. Okay, so that comes off by just pulling. I don't like these kind of uh, openings because um, I'm going to have to depress the. I'm going to have to depress these tabs. And hopefully release the top case here all right we're going to that's just to protect it sometimes I like to do that that's a, a rubberized mat also a little little uh, tissue there Right then, we're back. Uh, this has been an ordeal. Um, it's not been that long that I've been working on the clock. I took a break from it. Actually, this is a lazy Saturday when I'm doing this, and uh, took a nap. Hey, and I had dreams about trying to get this clock opened up. Believe it or not, so I struggled and struggled. I did lose two tabs in the back. They are very thin tabs now that I see. These are the, the front tabs are the more substantial tabs. But once those tabs were out in the back, I kept trying to pull this case off and trying to get it loose. And it felt like something was stuck in here. I thought for sure something was stuck in here. But clearly the correct approach is to go ahead and get the front tabs released first and then the back tabs. Okay, lesson learned. So we open this up. And we find that it is the Enigmatic Copal 2 motor involved here. Now what's cool or different about the... We'll fire this up. Fires right up. Starts right up. Oop. So what's cool about or different about this clock? I don't say cool because I don't really like it that, that much. It's different. Uh, the Copal 222 does this as well. Now this is this is dangerous. Most of your copals, um, you don't have this um, straight mains electricity right there. This clock is running off of 120, and the the electric's right there. So I could put my hand on here and get shocked uh, on camera. And I'm gonna say something, and you're gonna you're not gonna believe it. I've never been shocked by a flip clock ever. Uh, someone told me they said don't say that. Um, well, I'm not superstitious. I uh, think it's unlucky to be superstitious. So anyway, we have a clock here that says no jewels. We have, and you see, do you see the difference besides this uh, right there trying to get me? Uh, AC 100 volts. Uh, we talked about this in the previous video, but uh, we're pretty sure, and when I say we, I'm talking about people who restore clocks, that these are the same motors as they sell to uh, countries that run at 110, 120. They're just the same motors. Um, the same windings they wouldn't have any difference between 100 and 120 most likely all I know is that we can run these on 120 uh, without fail without any problem so that's the answer there uh, I do have a Japanese converter that takes it down to 100 so if I have a clock that's well a little more precious uh, I probably will use that transformer if I'm looking at the clock uh, 
anyway, so the thing that's this that's this odd is that I, I wondered, well, why are there no mechanism screws? Uh, and I thought, well, there's a piece of spring. Why, why is the spring? I was pretty sure it was the holdback spring, right here, the tail end of the hour holdback spring. Why is that in the bottom and there's no screws? Well, that's because the mechanism is integral with the extruded plastic here. So this is all one piece. This side and this side here are actually part of this plastic. So you couldn't take the mechanism out like, like you do with most clocks. You would disassemble this mechanism to get that out. So, okay. Uh, I don't particularly like that, uh, but... Uh, still, we've got a good clock here. I still appreciate it. All right, just wanted to break in here. We talked about looking at how this clock switches from 50 to 60 hertz operation. Um, this back just came loose. That just came right off. Look at that. You can see where that um, the the hour holdback comes down through here and goes into the bottom. Um, we talked about that. That's where the that gets held back there. Anyway. The thing was, how does this switch from 50 to 60 hertz operation? What I've normally seen is there a supplement, supplemental thing here that has a separate gear train um, and that would switch back and forth. But in this case, they were using the gear inside the gearbox itself. So you've got the gearbox here and it switches the gear train here. There's 50 to 60 hertz operation. Um, I will say, um, knowing how the Japanese are often very, very much sticklers for quality, that the quality of this AP113 is not as high as some of the other flip clocks. Um, I'm not sure exactly when the AP113 came out. I'll do a research and over here I might throw up an advertisement if I can find something to get an idea of when these come out. I would bet they were later. The quality is just, see the plastic here. It's, the, it's just not there. They, they let this pass through QC. So anyway, not to diss it, I'm really, still really glad I... I got this clock um, again it was a booger to get open it really was a struggle even if I had started on the front tabs it's a struggle to get that out they didn't make it to, um, to be disassembled what what I will do is I will reattach those tabs using super glue and that's probably going to be more for looks than anything else but if I if I let it cure enough then it'll snap it'll snap back and it may look just fine no one looks at the bottoms of my flip clocks. Well, there it is, the AP113, a closer inspection. Uh, it was wrought with troubles and had to result to dreams and struggles. Well, there it is. Thanks for taking the time.